Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. We have with us Bala Gautamanji, and we are going to be again taking a look at what is happening in the Deep South. First of all, we're also going to be looking at the Congress manifesto because even rural folk are making some snide remarks about it. Is it really unrealistic? Is it a cruel joke? Anything that we find there, uh, Bala Gautamanji is going to analyze it for us. So that's one thing. And we're also going to give you an update from the ground post the Modi uh, tour where he has actually addressed two or three rallies. We'll touch upon those things also. Most importantly, please like this video you need to make this thing to go viral we know we, we would rather watch ipl but this concerns your future ipl will have a rush and then down thank you so much and now let's welcome bala gautamanji bala gautamanji namaskar and welcome to p guru's channel namaste namaste sir um this um <laughs> I, I i was blown away you know in the deep south in sivaganga constituency a lady like 75 80 years old is poking fun of the Congress manifesto with the candidate Karthi Chidambaram standing right by her side. So this, I mean, has the Congress manifesto becoming a laughing stock, sir? Yeah, it's a laughing stock uh, in one sense. And in another sense, it is a disaster also. It is uh, uh, a manifesto which is, if I mean, it is not going to get implemented at any point of time because Congress is not going to win. So that is for sure. But uh, this manifesto has got all touches in a way that is going to spoil or ruin the entire country. I think that is there. That is one of the some of the ingredients in this manifesto is anti-national, anti-people, you know, and anti-progressive, uh, anti-development. No. I can say. I mean, to say that every woman in the in the in the nation is going to get one lakh. I mean, this there is no such money. Even if they start taking and printing it from the mint, with no regards to the exchange rate, it's not possible. How is it that they are trying to you know make all these um, unbelievable promises? Uh, look, uh, Congress is still thinking. That they can fool people as they have fooled it for, for over for the period of 75 years. But this is not going to happen. That is what you have seen in Shivaganga. And the candidate standing by his side, by her side. And uh, she could not have known about what is there in the manifesto. So mostly she has come out of a meeting of the Congress party. Where the own party has spoken about this one lakh per uh, annum. And after hearing it. She is coming to a conclusion that this is not going to happen. So this is what the reputation Congress party has earned. And this is something that we need to know. You know, um, Gautamanji, this is just the, that's one of the things. They, the way they go about, uh, you know, uh, ranting. Give us a little so bit I about mean, what is the goal of this? To try and give some unbelievable promises. Somehow, Karnataka people got fooled. They think that they can fool the rest of the nation. Karnataka, they got fooled. And now Congress is thinking, uh, I mean, no one is going to read this manifesto. So based on this manifesto, some, I mean, you know, some uh, news channels which are paid by them, they are going to put up some news items here and, and there. And this is what Congress is expecting out of it. Look. Uh, they said that the, when the farmers' protests were on, it was Rahul Gandhi who demanded that uh, MS, MS, uh, Swaminathan Committee report needs to be implemented. Implemented, yeah. Okay. So now you go in the, through this manifesto. They said that we are going to promise minimum we are, uh, guarantee for some farm producers. Legal guarantee. Oh. Okay. So day before yesterday or yesterday, I think some Congress leader who is a part of this manifesto committee, Praveen Chakravarti is his name, he is giving an interview to some channel. And a current Thapar is asking him this question, what you are going to do? And uh, we know what MS Swaminathan said is the cost of production plus 50% of it should be the MSP. This is the formula of MS Swaminathan Commission. He immediately said that we have not agreed upon that formula, that we will discuss about it. That we have not specified here. Then Karan Thapar is asking another question. Are you going to cover all the 23 products? 
which the farmers have demanded to be there. He said that we, the manifesto has not specified it. Because when you are questioned on each and every nitty gritties of that particular manifesto and where the money is going to come, how it is going to work out. And these are the answers given by the people who really drafted the manifesto. So it is very clear that this manifesto is going to now there is a uh, some farmers protest is going on here and there. So how can that group and some of them are allied with some Nexel group, how they can be used for uh, to frame some uh, issues or uh, to say that they are all the other parties are anti farmer and we are pro farmer. So it is just uh, this manifesto is a tool for them to create a, a sort of anarchy or something else. Nothing more than that in this uh, uh, this particular portion of this agriculture part of this manifesto. And the most uh, worrying factor about this manifesto is the first thing started off with the cost census. And that is the first portion in the manifesto which you can see. That means now this is what Congress stood all its, uh, all its journey from 1947 onwards after Nehru took over the reins of the Congress because, I mean, this is a new Congress. I can't equate it with the Congress of Bal Ganga, Dharatilak, or even Mahatma Gandhi. So it's a new Nehru Congress. So the first they started off with saying that it is going to be a caste census. Look, Gandhiji spoke about uh, eradication of untouchability, caste practices, and so on. But the Congress manifesto starts with the caste census. So now there is a Hindu unity which is going across the country. Hindus are just forgetting those things and now they are getting unified under a Hindu identity, which Congress doesn't want. That is how, that is why they have placed it as their first agenda, just to go through the manifesto book. That will be the first thing that you can see. So division of Hindus along caste lines this is the primary objective of this. This is a message they are communicating that they want to have a caste-based segregation a politics or a violence based on caste so that Hindu society can be divided based on the divisions, minorities, I mean, Islam or Christianity, that they can go on doing conversions and other stuff. So it is a planned uh, uh, thing, not only to uh, divide Hindus, but to help conversion to take. And that is first thing, that this is the, what I say it is, not only a joke, it has got a dangerous element of dividing the country. Because on the other hand, you look at the BJP manifesto, that speaks about inclusion, that speaks about development for all, that speaks about, uh, uh, you know, erasing disparities and all stuff. Go through the Congress manifesto. It got divisions everywhere. And then there is another thing on the now we are again going to implement this Maulana Azad scholarship. And another one is saying that, okay, uh, that we are going to fund that uh, rightly as you started of saying that one lakh per year and uh, uh, many freebies in their um, manifesto. And when someone asked this question to Sam Petroda, Sam Petroda immediately responded that we will tax the people to get the money back. So now Congress is going to now, if, if I mean, it's not going to happen anyway, they are not going to win anyway. But the formula of Congress is clear. If we are voted to power, we will give all these uh, facilities to Christians and Muslims. For this, we will tax Hindus. So rob a Hindu, pay Peter and uh, Iqbal. And this is what Congress formula is. And this is one thing that you have to see in the manifesto. And the first they say that uh, it is for equality. And this is how they say that we are going to protect the constitution. Then they started off saying that it is equality has to be done. If there is going to be an equality, then why there is a disparity between minority and a majority? So that itself means that what Congress is going to do if they are going to come back to power. So Congress, the, the entire manifesto is very clear. It has got all anti-Hindu, anti-national overtones here and there. And uh, this type of document, if Congress is going to, you know, bring publicly before elections that I am seeking vote based on this, 
then I think that still Hindus are going to vote for Congress. I can't, I mean, there are no words to describe who a Hindu is. Um, Gautamanji, we are going to briefly put up one picture. This is uh, come in an article in a magazine called The News Minute. Viewers, for those of you who don't know how popular or how important the, the left loony indie ecosystem thinks about Bal Bala Gautamanji, you can get an idea from this. Can we have the picture, please? So Gautamanji is uh, also the main face of Shri TV channel. And you can see his face as well as Sri logo in this. This is nothing but a rant. They are going on saying that, oh, BJP has funded all these YouTube channels. And outside of this YouTube system, BJP is nothing. I mean, this goes on and on and on and on. I, I know the antecedents of the News Minute. The News Minute was, uh, um, you know, funded by uh, Pierre Omidyar of uh, eBay, as well as I think Quintillion Systems. They have a stake in this. Essentially, all the pedigrees that would fit a left loony ecosystem. And they go on, routinely go on rants. Uh, I mean, I, I have nothing but this, this uh, disdain for them. At the same time, see, the thing here is you can see the frustration coming pouring out. What these people don't understand is, or they don't know, is what kind of a penetration a YouTube channel has inside the house, in the privacy of the room. Is a 60, 65 year old semi literate woman watching YouTube channel to understand? Because Gautamanji has been putting out last week episode, he told us eight videos a day, and some of them are fantastic, guys. If you understand Tamar, he is such a crisp, sharp messaging that this, you with that kind of a sustained bombardment, people will start changing minds. Gautamanji, kudos to you how, for envisioning that. This amount of content, the content is also very, very nice, I must say, because I don't miss a single one. Thank you so much for doing this work. I don't know how many hours you and your team put in, in getting all these videos out. But sir, this particular article merits a separate episode. Uh, you know, both of us will take a look at it and then come back and, and uh, maybe even after the elections are over, because this will be one of those analysis. What kind of an impact YouTube had? Because you see, one of the things that I don't know rightly or wrongly, some parties may think, oh, we have put a, a video on YouTube and everybody is watching YouTube. That's enough. We don't have to go door to door canvassing. I'm just giving out a theory, Gautamanji. So I, we don't know what kind of an effect finally YouTube is going to have. But talk to us a little bit about you're still in um, Kanyakumari. You've been working ceaselessly day in, day 24 7. This is not easy. Talk to us a little bit about how things are going ebb and the flow. Nothing changed much as far as uh, BJP is concerned. But the groundswell is in favor of BJP. And uh, I haven't seen such an incumbency against a state government in a parliament election. This is not a state election. This is a parliament election. But I am seeing an anti-DMK, I mean, an uh, anti-incumbency against the DMK government. And... Uh, Wherever the Congress people are going or wherever the, the Alliance people are going, people are ridiculing like the, uh, anything. And this is what the trend is. This is the groundswell. But unfortunately, the election management of part of BJP is still lacking. There is not much of a difference after this last show, which I'm, uh, uh, it's paining me a lot because opportunity like this will not come in every elections and BJP has got such an opportunity number one and number two I travel not only in this constituency I travel in some other constituencies too but Christians and Muslims are this time voting for BJP in small numbers and in some places where in uh, central south uh, I mean up uh, central uh, down south Converted Christian Devendra Kula community is now rooting for BJP. In some places I am seeing people from that community, they are mobilizing people from the other community. That is the Parayar community is again classified as a C community and said that if at all we want some protection that we have to go towards BJP. And this campaign is not done most by the BJP, 
it is by the community people themselves. So now you can understand what the ground situation is. It won't happen that easy. And uh, Kanyakumari district is not for, known for its fanatic Christian uh, uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Even here, I met some Christian friends and they said that they are going to vote for BJP this time. They say that, okay, uh, we don't want to go, uh, we don't want to be fooled by all these things. So likewise, there is a groundswell. It is not only among the Hindu community, even among other communities too. But the problem is now, see, since it is the, since the only party which understood this groundswell is DMK. No other party in the state has understood this groundswell. And DMK is doing door canvas. And even they are distributing money now itself. Yes. I was going to come to that. Go ahead, sir. Please finish your thoughts. Yeah. So they have started doing this. And in many places, they have started by, you know, uh, uh, going and meeting some leaders and they are willing to concede anything. Because this is the fear now DMK has got on the ground. Unfortunately, BJP is concerned. There are many people who are capable of running elections, but all are not in the uh, party working apparatus. There are many people, they are good people, the new people who have come to the BJP, but none of them know how to conduct elections. So this is a place where BJP is really lacking and we have nine more days to do and BJP can still catch up. I think P Gurus has to reach this message to the BJP and they have to really try. And as on today, BJP has got some chances in 8 to 10 seats. The BJP can really put up some hard uh, efforts. And uh, if they are able to, you know, work out with their local party differences and if they can uh, uh, strategize properly and work. And I think uh, uh, BJP can touch double digit in this parliament elections. There is always a possibility provided BJP has to work on it. Uh, sir, uh, it's not nine days. I think uh, the campaigning starts two days prior, isn't it? 48 hours before that, the campaigning will stop? Stop. Yet it will stop because you can't go on for the mic and other things. Right, but, right. Uh, right. You can go and do some door canvas and that is uh, at the individual level. That's we can okay, do. okay, okay. Now, uh, Gautamanji, I'm getting a lot of comments via, via YouTube whenever we put videos that in some constituencies, uh, the advance payment of 2000 rupees per voter is already paid plus plus some, some places it is hmm? some places it is 5000 no no hear me out sir it's it's 2000 for uh, payment as cash one month grocery hmm that's uh, you that's draw down cheaper. you draw down whatever you want hmm. ah, that that will not exceed more than 1000 that they are i mean it's a knack so that 5000 hmm. has come down to 3000 so that 2000 hmm. will be taken by the local DMK pool. Could and be. He has could got be, some. Could be. Now, um, the, the, this is one side. The other side is already we are seeing, uh, see, you are close to Trinil Valley. We can, you can talk to us about what has been alleged in that constituency about uh, money being, uh, some, some politicians being caught with money. Uh, I'm unclear a little bit because looks like the DMK has actually been caught with it, but they are trying to make it look like it is Nainar Nagendran, Nagendran, which is a BJP candidate. That is his money. Just talk to us a little bit about what is happening in Tinal Valley. It is, well, no one knows whose money it is, right? But the thing is, what you have to understand, there should be a DMK setup. The reason is very clear. Three days prior to this particular raid, DMK office was raided and uh, lakhs of rupees were taken away out of DMK office. Immediately this thing happened. So this is just to set, uh, set the trend that it is uh, people now they say that okay DMK is having money they are going to do uh, they are going to distribute this money DMK is using money power to win elections. So immediately to offset that particular image they have uh, st uh, stage managed this thing and this is what I honestly feel. Now, why it has come up immediately after the raid in the DMK office? So, it is stage managed. So, anyone can understand this. Now, um, thank you for that. The, the other interesting thing you mentioned, uh, that money is getting distributed already. Uh, 
see dmk always through all their existence they say we love our voters because of their short term memory if they take the money now itself and they spend it don't you think there could be a withdrawal symptom by the time elections come along no because the thing is what uh, this is where that is why i said that bjp is missing the bus look uh, people now lotus is there in everyone's mind the symbol got registered and people believe that this is the only alternative to this dravidian uh, uh, hooliganism which is ruling tamil nadu for all these time this is there in everyone's mind and look who will be get easily swayed away it is basically the women the the elderly in the house to this internet and they are not in the thick of political things on every on daily day to day basis in whatsapp or youtube so when the, the, the local person I mean uh, people from outside will not go and give money the local person will go and get amma give me a promise that you will do i will give money and say that okay no one come from any other party is the only person who has come so he has given me money also so why not i will vote for him and this trick dmk is going to play in this elections because people from bjp have not approached them so far that is the real issue because they have to do at least they should have covered two rounds of door canvassing by now because two sundays they have missed out and the the next one is going to be the last sunday before elections so you have missed out on two how you are going to make use of the third and this is my question and whether the party is thinking of it i have no idea about it and they don't know how to even route for their campaigning vehicle where they have to campaign and they don't have so local speakers to be there what needs to be spoken at which point no planning at all so how you are going to make use of this ground swell you think uh, you oh, know uh, one interesting one interesting observation gautam ji on on p guru's uh, videos frequently is he say you guys are whining too much about whining means uh, nee 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 whining about uh, bjp's prospects in uh, tamil nadu see listen anybody who wants to have that opinion you can have it it could be any some you know dravid punju also who is doing all that comments it's okay the question here is the reality is matching what we are saying that what is the the issue uh, gautam ji i have a feeling this is my gut feeling bjp targeted only 10 seats or something like that and they think that they have the infrastructure in those 10 seats outside of that they are sort of exposed that's how it looks like i'm not sure again even coimbatore uh, you know see i no, I, i don't think this is this is again a wrong calculation by bjp so look tanjavur is a seat which bjp doesn't have there in their uh, bracket right right okay some of my friend who traveled through tanjavur he said he went to a village which is dominated by scheduled caste community where almost 30% of the people there in the village say that they are going to vote for bjp so bjp is getting support from many unexpected quarters this is what i say that bjp failed in a way to realize that there is a trend coming in their favor and when i spoke about this in your channel before some people are saying that okay i am uh, you know i am sounding somewhere cynical or something else and now the elections are on there and you are having a wave in your favor and there is an anti incumbency wave and the other party i don't know where adm case that we have to search through a lens now because the swing of the swing voters as well as the disenchantment with the dmk is coming towards you but you are not willing and you are not ready i don't say willing you are not ready to accept that support and this is what i am talking about the preparedness at the booth level and other level for a long period of time booth committees are not enough you need to have local leaders who can really change things at the last minute at the uh, at the last link of the chain you don't have any you have not cultivated it you have not you know groomed them so this is something that i am talking for a long, quite a long time i am sorry the bjp can still they can do it still bjp can do it they have a possibility they can really bounce back they can start doing that work for the next one week or so they can really catch up
And, and and here this is why the opportunities keep coming up. You you, you have to make use of it. Another thing I'm hearing, Gautam Anji, is that even for those constituencies where they have identified booth level workers, they they need some money for sustenance. You're not going to flood them with lakhs of rupees, but they need some money for sustenance. For example, for staying, for food, uh, wherever they are. See, they may not be in local people, but they have to still go and walk the street, panna pramuks and things like that. I am hearing that there is a distribution problem also. I mean, BJP is used to doing a well-oiled machinery. Why is that problem coming up? That's what I'm hearing, sir. Sir, this is what I told you. Election machinery, local leadership are all lacking in the BJP. That infrastructure in BJP is now not there in the ground. This is what I am warning from day one onwards. You said that why the money is not getting distributed? Because you don't have people who can strategize and run elections. That is a problem. You don't know when you have to distribute no, uh, handles. You have uh, you don't have people who can really organize your door-to-door um, uh, -door campaign. You don't have people who can really strategize and um, give content for uh, your mic announcement and other things. None of this is there. That is the problem. Um, one, one, uh, one, one guy, uh, one comment here. Just one second. Sir. I want to bring this thing. Uh, Srikant Iyer wants to know, is there a language barrier? Uh, my dear friend, Annamalai has broken through the hardest rocks, you know, uh, barriers that the Dravida ecosystem had built. His Padayatra has done all that stuff. But he... Riding too much on his shoulders also is going to be counterproductive. And plus, so I still I don't, don't understand. Yeah. He, Why, he, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but people may having maybe having some difference of opinion with me, even in the, on this particular point of time. Anamala is able to reach the common man, no doubt. And the resentment which is showing on in the streets is because of Anamala's uh, effort. No doubt about it. But when it comes to managing a party or an election, Anamali has to learn more. I think that he has failed as a party president on that particular aspect. Sir, there is also, uh, I agree. I, I see he's only two years into this. He's also a political novice in the but sense. He has to understand because he has to understand that, okay, that I need to take help from people around. Yes. Look. Elections are not won by a single person. Look, when Modi ji was doing it for the first five-year term, Amit Shah ji was looking at the party. Correct. Okay. And again, the party missionaries in state were being given to some people who got some experience in running the campaigns and other things. And this is how they really built it up. So this is something that uh, he has to understand and he has to... Mostly in the next elections, I think 2026... BJP will either be a ruling party or an opposition party in Tamil Nadu. That depends on how they are going to take it from the here on. Still BJP, I have not written of BJP till now. They can still bounce back. But if they are going to learn from this experience and they are going to work on this, 2026 is going to be BJP's election. Very true. And um, viewers, BJP may also not be averse to seeding money because you have to fight fire with fire. You can't just say, I will not pay you any money and you should vote for me. I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I'm not condoning the behavior. Is, even, if money, even if money is given and how you are going to use it. How many people have got knowledge about using it in elections in BJP? That is the problem with BJP now. That is the only problem with BJP because there's a good groundswell. And they have good karyakartas, no doubt about it. Many newcomers are there, they are energetic and everything is fine. But there is a problem, it's only with the training and managing things. And, and, and also viewers, we are also hearing, I think some constituencies are under the radar for money distribution. Uh, it's again, it's a cruel joke. Every constituency there is money distribution. So then why are you not countermanding all the elections, right? So there is, this is a debatable point. The, the nine, 2019, Gautamanji, in Sivaganga, <laughs> a lot of things happened. And uh, still, the EC did not act because Mr. Chidambaram 
we, you can say whether junior or senior they had this day, same grocery distribution racket then also in 2019 also and uh, and they they could not nail one shopkeeper for giving distributing uh, groceries free because it, you cannot distribute groceries free would they not have put 24 hours of surveillance on two or three shops to find out where the money is coming in i mean they could have they knew it they just didn't do it so in in india the implementation of law and order much to be desired there i think we'll leave it at that gautam ji so, it is you know, very difficult for you to do this the reason is this is a network the dmk has created for every 10 to 30 voters that's a bunch we call it as one page one page of our electoral sheet right. it's got 30 entries so they have one person for every page that person will take care of they they will identify the need and they will uh, satisfy that need so it is highly decentralized so it is very difficult for you if i am going to catch him so out of the 30 votes we know that this 5 to 10 votes is going to bjp and this 6 to 7 votes going to admk so the rest is 15 and 5 is our party person and the rest is 8 to 10 votes that i have to concentrate so if you are going to pay 5000 i mean 2000 a vote it is 20000 which is much below 50000 which is uh, the allowed money that you can carry so this type of decentralization they have uh, you know uh, established it much earlier and the thing is if at all you are going to uh, challenge it that you have to plan much in advance and try to put check even before the money enters those areas and this is where uh, this is what i'm repeating from the day one onwards and this is what dmk will do well uh, gautam ji thank you so much and we have a few questions from our viewers let's take a quick look at that um thank you nitya kalani for your super sticker uh nagarajan srinivasan wants to know does booth management matter if people have made up their minds to vote for bjp Look, uh, the people who could have made up the mind are the ones who have access to news and other things. But there is another one big population, maybe the housewives and other people. And they are not uh, exposed to many things which are outside. And they can be lured by money. So uh, that is a very big chunk. So that constitutes around 15% of the voters. That is enough for you to swing as a constituency. Um, next question, please. Uh, Vijay Bharadwaj wants to know, Congress manifesto looks similar to so-called communal violence prevention bill of UPA 2005. Even after so many warnings, how do they expect people to vote for them? That is what the Gali Bill Hindu is all about. He doesn't care about anything. He doesn't learn for like lessons from history. He learns nothing. He forgets nothing. And still he remains like this. Congress knows that this Hindu is of this character. So they can do whatever they want. It is just like beating the donkey. And the donkey is not going to change. And it is again, it is going to go before behind the washerman all the time. And this is what a Hindu is. They, they have understood the Hindu psyche very well. And now things are slowly changing. It has not changed uh, until now. But Congress believes that, okay, they can do fool around with the people. That is why they have bring up this caste census and other stuffs. So that they divide the society. They want to change the discourse of um, Hindu unity to something else. So that is why they are investing on these things. Because they have to understand one thing. Because if they are not going to um, give all these uh, uh, lollipops to the minorities, if the minorities are going to split up, then Congress is never going to get even a single seat anywhere. So the Congress has to act as a Muslim League to stay. That is a, there is a compulsion for the Congress to do. Even if the Muslims say that we don't want anything, Congress will say, no, 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 you have to get it. This is a compulsion for Congress to at least uh, get a double-digit seat in these elections. This is something that Congress is banking on because Congress is now not aspiring to win uh, Lok Sabha, I mean, as a a prime ministerial seat. They are not looking for it. Now they want to survey their pride. Now they are looking for, okay, the last election we got 50 plus, now we want to get 60 plus. And this is for which Congress is fighting for. So they have nothing to lose. 
So when, even if the minority votes is going to get out of them, that is why, what, what is the necessity for Congress to state in their manifesto that we are going to have, a, you know, uh, the preference of dress, food, and all these things are coming in a manifesto. Look, that is how Congress is now, uh, 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 what we can say, begging at. Because without minority, there is no Congress. Very true, very true. Next question, please. Vardaraj and Ranganathan, what no? Sarvam DMK Mayam, including police. How do we break this view home at all? No issues. Now, 1500 to 2000 booths is what you have in every constituency. Now, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days you have. Go for one round of door to by door canvassing. And again, uh, the second step, leave alone Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, go for the second round. Uh, say that uh, vote for BJP. And uh, people know what BJP stands for because Modi and the Anamale, they have reached everywhere. If you do it sincerely, try to create an optics. Have your uh, campaigning vehicle go through all the roads with the blaring speakers so that everybody can hear tamarai, 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 that sound they have to hear everywhere. When you go for a door canvassing, go as a group of 8 to 10 people. So that will create another optics in the streets. If that is going to happen, then tell people that to resist money, don't get into it. If you are going to get this money and vote, then again, you are going to suffer. Send this message, go door by door. If these things can be done, if you can touch every house two times in the next eight to nine days, and then if your propaganda missionary, like your, you know, the auto or car, whatever it is, or doing the mobile propaganda, if that sound is going to be visible all through, and even now it is not so late, even in your own house wall, put the symbol of the party, Draw it. Create an optics. That is enough for you to win some seats. You have not created that optics. Just do this. That's enough for you now. Next question, please. Uh, Srikant Iyer wants to know, does Annamalai need an Amit Shah-like person? Sure. No doubt about it. He requires such a person, number one. And number two, he has to uh, understand that he has to cultivate local leaders. And this is what Anamale has to plan next. Because if you are going to take a missionary like DMK, you need to have strong local leaders who can fight with the police, who can fight with the missionary, who can, you know, fight uh, in the polling booth. They may, they may rig the booths. They, they can do any sort of thing. You require such leaders. And again, you require some leaders who know... Uh, who can understand what the other party is doing so that uh, immediately they can uh, respond with the agility on how to take the next uh, thing forward. Like uh, some leaders, at least at district level, that Anamale has to create. Um, I'm hearing a lot of uh, negative feedback on this program from our viewers. And I'll explain to you one by one why we have been consistent in this. Six months we've been saying this. It, Gautamanji has uh, been on our channel for the last four weeks or so. But before that, for six months, Sri Ram Sashadri and I have been emphasizing that booth level strength, that needs to be worked on. It's not something that is new, guys. Don't exhibit the same kind of loss of memory that DMK expects its voter to do. You guys are intellectuals. You are educated. You understand where things are coming from. All this is, is basically to try and tell them some basics have to be covered. That's what it is. Nothing else. Uh, next question. Uh, Gautamanji, uh, GNB wants to know, you know how to run election? Uh, the suggest uh, Annamale from your side, you are people doing YouTube shows for hours, but you people no time for advice Annamale. What's happening on ground? GNB, how do you know that Annamale is even listening to advice? I, I have to say this thing because... He has got so many people giving so much input. If Modi comes to canvas and uh, some place in uh, Tamil Nadu, he has to stop whatever he's doing, come and participate in that rally. Do you understand how much time he is doing just traveling from place A to place B? I'm just telling some of the difficulties he has. Sir, you go ahead, Gautamanji. Mr. GNB, sir, 
it is not only giving advice. We can give even people and we can even strategize for Anamalai. You just get me a, a word from Anamalai whether he is willing to listen. Next question, please. I deliberately waited because I wanted that to sink in. Uh, Srikanth Ayer wants to know, Congress will ensure that like every citizen, minorities have the freedom of choice of dress, food, language and personal laws. Confusing individual and community rights. That is what I mean to say that Congress want to make everything political. And that is why they have put up this. Now, my question is very clear. If I am a vegetarian. Now, if I say that I have a choice of food, but I don't want to mix it with the non-vegetarian food. Will the Congress come up and say that a vegetarian is going to have a spirit, uh, I mean, you know, an, an independent dining uh, sort of facility and uh, the other one is going to have something else? Will Congress ensure that? So the thing is, okay, uh, whether pork will be served in the same uh, kitchen where beef is served, will they allow that? Will Congress uh, vouch for these two things? So it is basically they are making you feel that as, as if that your personal rights are being plundered. And again, these things, okay, if you are personalizing things, then you are bringing in a community element to these personal rights. That is, the, that is what Congress is doing. That is in the very beginning I said that Congress has communalized this entire election by this manifesto. And it is more dangerous and disastrous to this nation. I mean, it is. Uh, I mean, I can say, Congress is. Uh, if Congress is going to push up these thinkings, then Congress is going to create another Jinnah, and they want India to be partitioned again, because Jinnah is the creation of Nehru Gandhi, and I am very, uh, 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 been very sure about it. And from 1919 Lucknow Pact onwards, how Congress compromised and. That is how Jinnah was made and then what happened is history. And now if the discourse, if the political discourse is going on in this line, then India will have another partition-like situation. That is why, I, I mean, I want each and every viewer of this channel to come and work in the field that, that we are in a situation where one major political party, which is an opposition party, is rooting for vivisection of this country. And this is a very grave danger the country is facing. Um, next question, please. Um, Sri, Sri K wants to know, how do we identify SC, ST or OBC Hindus converted to Christianity still enjoy the benefits of government? Any solution for this? Why? Only solution is the local people have to come up with the proofs and uh, put it across. Look, we, there is a uh, church register is there. It is very difficult for you to get it. So you can't get it. So there will be some other name and they will say that I am not this person and all these things. So marriage, wedding invitation or some uh, uh, ceremony Burial. with mm. and things. Those things that you can go, go and go to the government and say that they are Christians. Because recently the, the Honorable Court, and this is a word that we have to use in uh, public discourses, that whether they are giving honorable judgments or not, but you have to call them honorable courts. And one recent judgment says that, okay, having a, 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 a photo of Jesus or a person who is going regularly to church, with that you can't say that he is a Christian. So, uh, judgments of these things are there because there is no classification, legal classification of religion is available and then this is what uh, our constitution is all about. So, um, uh, uh, since the judgments are of this type, it is very difficult for you to work on this particular field. But the only thing what we can do as far as we are concerned, uh, up to our level, what we can do is pick up those uh, invitation type of things or uh, participating in uh, some religious event, uh, which is truly Christian. That is like Easter or something else and doing certain services. And if his name is printed somewhere else, likewise, these evidences can stand in uh, the court of law. With that, we can really do. 
Church register is a very good option, but provided you should have uh, the reach to get it. If you have the bandwidth, you can access it and you can make use of it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Gautamanji. Yeah. I have one small uh, addition to add to all this stuff. You know, uh, Congress, why not Rahul Gandhi's application does not mention the fact that he has dual citizenship? Because once you do that, you're automatically disqualified. He does not mention about the criminal case on him regarding the National Herald case. So the Kerala BJP, pres I think he's still the president. Surendran is still the president, right, uh, Gautamanji? No, so, I think he, anyway, he was now, yeah. he was a president. I, I know that for for sure. Surendran was the president. He is contesting Vayanad against Rahul Gandhi. There's also Annie Raja uh, on the communist uh, front. Now, what prevents Surendran ji from complaining to the EC that this person's candidacy should not be accepted, that it should be uh, uh, you know uh, voided out? Because he has blatantly done this. What prevents yeah. BJP Central Command from telling their state unit, guys, go and listen, this is Mahabharat. This is the easiest thing you can do. I will, I will give you an example, viewers, of one individual who won his first election this way. He went on to become the president of the United States, Barack Obama. On the last so, day look, of filing nominations, he made sure that everybody else was disqualified. On some month, he just did his technical work. He said, this guy is disqualified because of this. This guy is disqualified because of this. The only person left standing was Obama. That's how he won his first election. Sir, go ahead. You want to say something? Sir, this is what I am telling you from day one onwards. This is what the strategy and knowledge about I mean, uh, managing elections and uh, strategy how to do these elections. And uh, these things are missing in BJP. Now, this is one of this factor. Look how they have uh, um, uh, troubled Anna Malay when he filed his nomination in Coimbatore. Yes. Nothing. But now, with all these things, Garabe, no one opposed his nomination there during the scrutiny time. This is what we have to learn. And this is what I am telling from day one onwards. That is where you lack technical persons who are supposed to be there. They should be trained. You have people, but the thing is, you have not identified and put them in proper places. That is a problem. The the irony of this, uh, Gautamanji, is that in 2019 also, Surendran contested on the BJP ticket against Rahul Gandhi. You would expect that by now he would have wisened up. If, if you are such an incompetent person, you shouldn't be running or leading the party. I'm sorry to say this thing. I am looking at it as an individual. I have got to give the best shot. And, and some of you are passing some negative comments about Gautamanji. You guys don't know the history. The first Hindu candidate to win in the recent past from Tamil Nadu was because of the efforts of some of the things that Gautamanji did. I don't want to go into details. You have to look him up. How much work he does, has done on the ground. Okay. And it's our, uh, our honor that he has time found time to talk to us. So please do your do your research and then ask some of these questions. Sir, uh, you wanted to say something in conclusion? I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to have such comments. You know, uh, <laughs> the thing is, people will get informed after the, I mean, after certain experiences. Even I do have certain views like them some time back. But experience make me a person whom I am today. So people will also get experience. But the thing is for me, I want BJP to win all 40. And this is what my uh, uh, wish is. And I am working for it. So I am not just typing, uh, you know, I am not producing programs from Sri TV studio. Or I am not typing articles or comments somewhere else. Sitting, I am in the ground. I am working in the ground. And uh, even I slept at two o'clock yesterday, and today morning I'm six in the ground, right? So I have no problem. I don't. I mean, I don't want to. Uh, I mean, uh, explain what I am doing to everyone because I am doing for my own society. I want my Hindu society to win. But the thing is, now if it is an opportunity that I want everyone, uh, first you have to realize. I mean, I mean, I mean if there are many Tamil uh, uh, people who are watching it. If you go through Kambaramaayana. 
Kambar said this word. One of the biggest virtue of a person is pirai wooden badudal. That is accepting his own mistake is the biggest thing a person, the biggest virtue for a person. I believe in Kambaramayana. So I want Hindu organizations or BJP to understand this and course correct. I am the first one to say that Anamalai need to be the chief minister of the state in Sri TV when he becomes the president of the party. At that time, there was no that much anomaly thing was not there in the media at that particular point of time. I have I'm seeing many comments saying that I am against anomaly. What is there with me for anomaly? Okay. He's a kid who has just come into politics, but I want him to be a successful kid. That's it. Okay, I'm happy. Okay, you go on doing whatever you want to do, whatever comment you want to make. But till my last breath, I will work for this. If there is anomaly today, I may not be today, but I will work for this cause. Viewers, uh, you guys look at data, you can make decisions, right? Go to youtube.com, search on Shri TV, S H R E, just like the way it is written there. I think there's a number one after that, but just search Shri TV, you will get uh, Shri TV's uh, channel. Click on the channel, look at the number of subscribers, look at the videos under that, and see how many views the videos are getting. That will tell you a story that this is perhaps one of the most shadow banned TV channels on YouTube. And why is that? Because you and I may not uh, see the thing, but the people who are after up to mischief, they know that if Sri TV starts spreading on the among the people, the kind of damage it can do. Okay, so please, there is there is this is a complex uh, structure. Politicians. 24 7 things are only thinking about how do I get elected again? And while that is happening on the other side, how do I make money? This is just a degree changes between one party and the other party. That's all. Okay, so take the take the points as something that's constructive. I'm sure Annamalaji may not watch the entire thing, but somebody will summarize it for him, what we have told today. Because the thing is, the opportunity is bigger than what you originally thought. That is the takeaway here. That is the that only is the takeaway. takeaway. The thing yeah. is, it is not a wave. It is a tsunami against DMK, which is blowing. And this tsunami is created by none other than Anomaly. But the problem is Anomaly, it is not getting, it is not getting materialized. And in a way, it's, it's sort of desperation for me. And that we have to understand this. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. And and I apologize if some of the comments have not been the most appropriate one. That's okay. Viewers, we love yeah, all your right. comments. Yeah. So many Muslims because we are also are making you to think. Yeah. Commenting. And our people are also commenting. One day they will again come. They will realize what what I am talking. It doesn't matter. Yes. 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 Thank you so much, sir. And viewers, we'll be back again in about half an hour's time with Sumit Peer on um, our favorite neighbor, Pakistan. A lot of things are happening. Gilgit Baltistan update. Amazing stuff that's going on there. So we'll be back again. Gautam Anji, hopefully next week I'll find time because that'll be the last day or something like that before election. Hopefully, I mean, you have committed your time to us, sir. I'm eternally grateful for you, to you for that. And P Guru's channel is enriched by your experiences. Thank you so much. Namaskar.